Um, I guess uh, this is probably the only place where I can mention the idea of Yukawa potential or Yukawa type potential. So let me just uh, um, write down the name, Yukawa potential. So this is the kind of starting place. You start by thinking about what is the requirement on this new type of interaction that <laughs> we know nothing about. <laughs> um, and, right? <laughs> so imagine you are a nuclear physicist in the 30s, 40s. You know enough about electromagnetic interaction and you know enough about gravity that in the particle interaction, you can kind of ignore gravity. It's kind of spectator in most interactions. So you know enough about electromagnetic interaction, and you know enough about quantum mechanics to know that um, the quantum mechanics and the theory of electric magnetism has been fully validated in the study of at at atomic spectra. So in the discretion of the Bohr model, which matches experiment very well, we didn't have to introduce anything new. So that's your starting place. And now you are trying to introduce a new interaction, which must uh, explain this new phenomena. And a type of correspondence principle continues to hold. It's this idea that this new thing that you are introducing must not mess up the old thing. <laughs> right? So based on that, you can start to um, kind of put some constraints on how this strong force should behave. And I guess in the interest of time, I'll give you the one biggest uh, uh, characteristic of this strong force. The biggest characteristic of this strong force is that this must be a short range force. Why? <coughs> so uh, let me tell you what I mean by short range. Um, how does gravitational and electromagnetic forces depend, um, depend as a function of distance? Oh, One over R squared, the inverse <coughs> of square law, right? These two forces, their forces go as 1 over r squared, or if you look at the potential, their potential goes as 1 over r. And it turns out um, this type of dependence characterizes a long range um, interaction. You can kind of see it. You know, what are the type of structures that are held together by gravitational force? Planet, anything bigger? Solar system, anything bigger? Galaxies. I'm not sure about the universe, but there are like a galax uh, there's a, a, like a clusters of galaxies, and there are super clusters of galaxies. So gravitationally bound systems, there's no limit to how large a scale it can be. So um, so it comes down to when you do detailed scattering calculation, the scattering cross section for this type of potential ends up being infinite. There's however far away you get, you are always affected to some degree. And so electromagnetic forces are also has an infinite range, but the reason we don't see the effect of electromagnetic force in the large scale is we reason that there is positive and negative charge. Um, so anything that has a net charge kind of attracts other charge. So the planets are electrically neutral more or less. That's why you don't see it on astronomical scale. So these are the long range forces. So, when we call this interaction short range, that means we are limiting it to, uh, somehow this has a different depend, distance dependence than this. Um, and so I just don't want to make sure that you have some intuition for why we are assuming strong interaction must be short range. Like why? Okay, so you don't see, so you don't see um, this strong um, attractive force in the macroscopic scale. All right, so then let's go down to microscopic scale. Uh, what kind of range should this have? What's the um, upper limit on how far away this um, force can be effective? 
So we are saying it would not be effective within a millimeter or a micron range. I think you can go a lot smaller. The size of the atom. Okay, so uh, size of the atom, yeah. So size of the atom is about a uh, scale of 10 to minus 10 meters, right, on angstrom. Does this strong interaction play any role, any measurable role at 10 to minus 10 meters? Oh, well, that's size of nucleus. This is size of an atom. Two different things. It doesn't suck the electron in, but I guess the electron actually turns out it doesn't participate in strong interaction. So, oh, maybe, hmm. So biggest evidence you can cite to argue that at this atomic scale, strong interaction is negligible is that it's, it's the atomic spectra. When you look at the spectrum of a hydrogen atom, it's completely explained by just the electromagnetic interaction. So if this was some uh, uh, important player, then you wouldn't, um, that would not be the case. So, so this, is, this is actually still long range because interaction at this range is still only mediated by electromagnetic interaction. So, okay, so let's just be more specific. Does, we know the typical size of nucleus. Typical size of nucleus is about 10 to minus 14 meters, about 10,000 times smaller than uh, size of an atom, and maybe 10 to minus 15. Do I want to call it 10? Uh, let's stick with the 10 to minus 14. So this is short range. The range of this nuclear force must be about 10 to minus 14 meters. And um, so Yukawa is the guy who proposed what kind of form this potential can take in order to limit this interaction into this range. And what he guessed was, well, let's uh, hypothesize this potential over this form. So instead of a potential function simply going as one over r, he was uh, adding a multiplicative factor to this, or multiplying another factor to it. And the factor he added was the exponential decay. So he was hypothesizing that the potential that can be associated with this might take this form, e to the minus distance over some characteristic length. And based on this experimental observation of the nucleus size, what he would guess is, well, or I guess at the time it would be more like upper limit on the nuclear, nuclear size, you, he could guess, well, this characteristic length, maybe it's about 10 to minus 14 meters. And is it kind of intuitively obvious that if uh, the potential is modified by multiplying by this, that would limit the range of your potential? Yes, kind of, enough, right? Yes, yeah. Um, I guess we can just leave that there. And that this is the characteristic length that, can, that determines how quickly this exponential is decaying. And here's the actually exciting thing. Um, once you have guessed this much, then there's a method with which you can guess the parameters of the particle that must be in mediating this interaction. So we said in the earlier discussion that comes from quantum mechanics that electromagnetic interaction is mediated by a photon, right? So you know, in quantum mechanics, everything that's a field has a particle associated with it. Everything that's a particle has a wave associated with it. So you can go back and forth. So if you have a strong interaction and there's some, some kind of field, some kind of influence of force, then there would be a force mediator associated with that interaction. So, so the Yukawa's guess for what that mediating particle is what came to be known as Yukawa's meson. So this leads to what came to be known as Yukawa's meson. And what I'm telling you is that there is a technique for calculating or estimating the mass of this meson. 